This gorgeous 1938 footage shows a training exercise for a German tank unit. Thanks to my Patreon supporters, it's available to show. At the end of this video, I'll show the rest of this reel, so stick around. It's worth it. Here we are, on our way from over Amagol to the monastery of the Benedictines in Ettal. It is of historical interest to note, as the abbot told us, that the monastery, after having been burnt down toward the end of the 18th century, was rebuilt again with the aid of funds donated by citizens of the United States. On our way to Oberau to catch the train to Munich, All aboard and no one missing. We arrive at Munich, Frauenkirche and Town Hall. Munich is the cultural center of South Germany. Its fame as a home of art and learning has spread far and wide. Especially foreign students have a great liking for this city. And here, as in Dresden, there is a large American colony. Munich is characterized by the inhabitants' high spirits, their sense of humor, their unaffectedness, their love of gay colors, and preference for distinctive national dress, of which we also bought some samples. All these features combined to make our stay in Munich a particularly pleasant one. We inspect the German Museum, containing masterpieces of natural and technical science, the largest of its kind in the world. Passing through the chemical and physical departments, we enter the mechanical section. One of the main features of this museum and a novelty to us is to see the exhibits wherever possible actually in motion instead of just standing there under glass covers. We can even experiment with a number of devices as we go along. Here we have the first railway engine. Of historical interest is the gorgeously equipped state coach of Ludwig II, the great patron of art and friend of Richard Wagner. Indicating the dawn of the technical age, the first automobile. Passing out into the garden of the museum, we here again see technical apparatus in the original. Aeroplanes, ship's propellers, and meteorological instruments up on the towers. Railway signals, the track is cleared, we're on the move again, and our train draws into the station at Heidelberg on the Neckar. The Schloss with sweet memories of the Midsummer Night's Dream and the city below. The cable car takes us up the side of the hill. Heidelberg has not only a fine tradition as a seat of learning, but it is also considered the classic spot for all the sentimental side of students' life. Alt Heidelberg, 
has become a byword for that sort of thing. I don't know what experiences our group had, but let it go at that. I'm not going to tell any stories. Steeply up through the treetops we go. Higher up still, we get a splendid view of the old town, extending to both sides of the river in the midst of the Odenwald. We have our tea or coffee, as the case may be, at the Königstuhl, high up above the valley. From Heidelberg, on our way to the Palatinate, we reach Speyer and view its cathedral, the Kaiser Dome, with its imperial burial vault, where nine German emperors of the Middle Age period lie buried. We lead on from Speyer to the Tsar territory and reach Saarbrücken where we visit the Ehrenmal on the heights of Spichern with a splendid view of the valley beneath. With the plebiscite looming ahead, the people on the Tsar are day by day bent on proclaiming their love of their homeland. Flags are out and numerous inscriptions on the walls like these here saying Germany even though you were engulfed in misery, we love you as never before, afford us an idea of the attitude of the population of the Tsar towards Germany, the borderline between the Tsar and France. We visit the steel mills of Völklingen, which practically demonstrate the importance of the Tsar industry and of its coal and ore production. These mills give us an impression of the high value attached to the Tsar territory from an economic point of view and explain to us why others find this richly mineralized industrial region so desirable and why they endeavor to uh, cast a veil over the significance of the indisputable origin and the language of the people. We are guests here of the owner of the mills, Mr. Rechling, who after our strenuous morning of inspection kindly invited us to lunch. Here we are heartily bidding him farewell, boarding our bus again, now bound for Trier. Trier, an old Roman city founded by Augustus Caesar and situated in the narrow valley of the Moselle. We circle around the marketplace, busy on this market day, and pass Porta Nigra, the old Roman town gate, dating from the third century. Further on, we get a view of the extensive ruins of the imperial Roman thermal baths, and then take our road along the Moselle at the foot of its famous vineyards. And now, let's get back to that training film.